please be seated. Thank you to the readers who brought the story of Christ's passion to our, to our attention today. It was hard not to pay quick attention as you all brought us into the moment of chaos. There are two things going on in the scripture today. There's the joy of the king who is coming. The joy of seeing and recognizing who Jesus is that comes from the crowd who meet Jesus when he enters Jerusalem. And then there is the chaos and the despair and the fear of the disciples and of Pilate, the chief priests, even Judas, those who put Jesus on trial and crucified him were feeling a certain amount of fear and desperation too. There are two things happening most of the time when people encounter God in the scripture. There is comfort in that God is present with them very close. There is the feeling that God is near them and has compassion for their fear and their confusion. And there is fear and confusion. The kind of fear and confusion that we see in the weird little detail in the Gospel of Mark of the young man who's watching Jesus get arrested, probably hanging back among the disciples, and we don't know who he is really. But Mark puts in this detail of this young man who's wearing just a cloth and apparently not wearing it very firmly because when, when the, the soldiers try to seize him along with the other possibly other disciples who are all running away because they're all associated with this person who's being arrested, he runs away and they get a hold of his cloth and he pull it off of him and he runs away naked. I don't know why Mark put that in there. I don't know why that's part of the details of this story. It's not in any of the other gospels. And there have been a lot of theories about who this person is, whether it's actually Mark <laughs> or whether it's somebody else or whether it's really just supposed to show that the disciples were naked and vulnerable and completely unsure what was going on. And I kind of think it's probably something like that. That's, that's something that there is a little bit of scholarly consensus that maybe it's there just to show that, there's, that there is a bystander who's watching this happen and has no idea and runs away naked. <laughs> it connects to me to an echo in Genesis when Adam and Eve confront God after they've made clothes for themselves, after they've realized that they have done something wrong in eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, G and they look at each other, and they're wearing their, their leaves or whatever they put on, and God says to them, who told you you were naked? And that's, that kind of connects for me. Who told you you were naked? And this naked man running away from Jesus, being arrested. No one told Adam and Eve that they were naked. They realized it because they were in this moment of lack of innocence. They, they lost something of their ability to be completely vulnerable and naked and have no idea that that was true. And that's part of that story, right? The fall is also a fall from security in God. And this young man who runs away naked from Jesus being arrested is also experiencing something truly unsettling. And so if we are entering into the story of Holy Week this year, we might think of ourselves in the person of that young man, or we might think of ourselves in the person of Peter, or in the person of the women who were following Jesus, and no one ever knows what they think, but there they are. <laughs> They're following Jesus, looking at Jesus. And we might think of ourselves in the person of Simon of Cyrene, who takes the place of Peter and holds up Jesus's cross. And we might think of ourselves as Judas, if we're feeling particularly traitorous this year, I don't know. But all of those people, I think, are experiencing as much vulnerability and as much uncertainty as the young man who runs away naked. They all deal with it in different ways. 
Judas, we know, makes a catastrophic choice to deal with the pressure he's feeling about what's going to happen to Jesus and what's going to happen to the movement and probably what's going to happen to him, and he tries to save his own skin. Peter makes the characteristic Peter decision of not making a decision, <laughs> of being befuddled <laughs> and not understanding what Jesus is saying to him. This is a common theme in Mark. Peter never knows what Jesus is really talking about. And yet, Peter will eventually come to know what Jesus was talking about, or we wouldn't have as many of the stories as we have, and we wouldn't have the church. Peter is one of the ones who runs away when the shepherd is struck, and he is as befuddled as everyone else. And he allows other people to define who he is. He allows other people to say, you were with Jesus. And he says, no, I wasn't. And he allows other people to remind him that he's a Galilean, so he sounds like he was with Jesus. And he says, no, I wasn't. And then he allows them to define him again, and that's when he realizes what's really happening. That he has failed to enter into what Jesus is really experiencing. And then he enters it. And we do too. Every year when we hear this story at the beginning of Holy Week and at the end of Holy Week, we re-experience something of our compassion for Jesus. We don't enter into this as though we were there. We don't enter into it as an empathetic person, as though we're having Jesus' experience. That's impossible for us to have. But what we do cultivate in Holy Week is compassion and gentleness for ourselves, for Jesus suffering for us, and for all of those befuddled disciples, even Judas. We cultivate our compassion. That's the way one processes a trauma. One hears the story and has compassion. One hears the story and has compassion again. <laughs> One hears the story again and has compassion again. One doesn't want to relive it all the time. It's, it's bad <laughs> to keep reliving it. But if we listen to those who have traumas, we are letting them do the gentle work of experiencing it in a way that they can put it aside. That's the work we're doing as a community. Every time we hear the passion, every time we enter a procession, every time we look at a picture of Jesus on the cross, and there's hundreds of them, so you can pick the one you want to look at this week. We don't do this to reenact it so that we feel better. We do this to have gentleness for ourselves and others and to experience the great love of God. So if you read this again for yourself, and I hope you will later this week, and you don't necessarily have Kui to give you all of the exciting details, and you don't necessarily have Judas to say, Rabbi, as though he's going to give him a big hug and a smooch, that's great. You don't have that. But you can enter into it in your mind, and you can meditate with it as though you are there. And I invite you to do that to find a person, whether it's the naked guy or Peter or the high priest who is trying to maintain some sort of order in the world that has gone crazy, or Pilate who's trying to figure out the best thing for him in this situation. You should enter into it the way that you need to enter into it this year, and it may be different than last year. It almost certainly will be different than last year because so much has happened this year for everyone. And when you enter into it this week, I hope that you will take the time to be with Jesus from different perspectives. And if you find yourself identifying with Jesus, well, then that is possibly what you need. But I hope that you will not identify so much with Jesus that you lose compassion for yourself. 
And so when Jesus is placed in the tomb, everyone can relax. And everyone can process what has happened to them. And on Saturday, you will have a quiet time to do that. This week will take you through all of this again. And then on Saturday, you will have a chance to be relieved, to be relieved of the story. And then on Saturday night and Sunday, we will begin the new story, the new thing, the new covenant. And I hope you will find yourselves ready for that, having gone compassionately through the story again with Jesus.